Hey everyone, it's Austin Solomon, the Solomon Group over at Coldwell Banker. Today we're doing an interesting episode. When is it okay to lowball on, an ho- on a home? So I get this uh, this question a lot. Um, and first you have to say like, well, what is a lowball? You know, what's a lowball offer? A lot of times you hear like, hey, well, we don't want to come in too low. We don't want to insult the sellers. Um, so it really depends. I mean, a lot of times you have to look at what price point is the home in? How long has it been on the market? Um, and is the house priced accordingly? Uh, what's the seller's motivation? Um, and then, then you have to ask yourself, well, do I really want the house too? Uh, is it something that I I really want or is it something that I'm willing to lose? Right? So these are all questions that you have to ask yourself in order to assess the situation to see if it's okay to lowball on a house. The biggest thing I would say is the first question you have to have to ask is, do you really want the home? Are you okay with letting it go if you don't get it, right? That's where I see people go wrong a lot is they really like a house. They make an offer on it. They come in low and, um, and you know, all of a sudden the seller says, oh, you know, I'm not going, I don't want to, I don't want to work with these people, right? And then, um, so that first offer that you make is a low ball. The sellers get upset. They're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with these buyers. You know, they kind of upset me. And then the buyers, then you're battling upstream, uh, from that point on trying to, you know, get the seller to, to do something. So, uh, that's not a good, that's not a good strategy in that case. So if you really want a house, I wouldn't suggest low balling. Uh, and I see it all the time. And again, it's kind of like if someone, if you meet someone for the first time and they say something that very much upsets you, you know, if they come back two minutes later and say something different, it's not really going to matter at that point. You already upset them. You already set the tone for the transaction. And so it's very difficult to recover from a lowball um, offer for a seller uh, a lot of times. So just be cautious about that. Now, so back to our question, though, when is it okay to lowball on a house? Well, if the house has been on the market, you have to know, like, how long has it been on the market, right? That's one of the other things, too. If it's brand new to the market, uh, you're probably not getting a huge, you know, price off. You're probably not getting a huge discount off of that listing price. The seller's going to want to know, hey, what, you know, what's the activity like? Um, they're going to want to have it play out in the marketplace and have some showings happen. Um, now, if it's been on the market for a year, it might be, it might be different. The sellers might be in a position where they're kind of wore out, they're tired and they, they need to sell. Um, another thing to look at is, you know, again, is, is it priced accordingly? If the house is generally, if they're asking for, if the sellers are asking for a good price for a house, if it's fair with the market conditions, And again, this is where you talk to your agent. You say, hey, is this a fair price? If they say, yeah, it is, you don't want to come in, you know, 15, 30,000 less. If it's a fair price, it's just not going to, it's just not going to happen. Right. But there are cases where an owner wants, you know, not a fair price. They want 20% more than what the house is worth. Right. And in that case, um, if the seller is truly asking more than what the home is worth, more than what, um, you know, is, is available, uh, in the marketplace, right? Then if you're coming in a little bit low, then you're probably a little bit more justified, right? Um, the other thing to look at is what price bracket is it in? So for example, in the Wausau area, the hundred to 200,000 price point, that's a very active price. However, if it's a million plus or even, you know, 500 plus, that's not as active of a price point. So on a million dollar listing, if you come in at 850, that's probably not that much of a low ball because that price point is very difficult uh, to to sell a house at. So, you know, and again, aside from some of the other things that we're talking about. Okay, then the other thing is what's the seller's motivation? Um, the, you know, that's probably, that's another consideration that you have to, you know, that you have to ask and know up front. If the seller has a strong motivation to sell within a certain amount of time, then, you know, it might be okay to, you know, to come in uh, lower. Uh, another thing that you see is what's the condition of the property. Oftentimes where you see low balls is if it's a foreclosure, if it's a property that needs a lot of work, right? An investor that's looking to purchase something. Um, that would be one of the areas where if the property needs a ton of work, right? More than just your cosmetic stuff, but 
if there's a lot of work and it's sitting on the market, that's a time where, hey, it's probably okay to, to, to throw a low offer in uh, if, you know, if a lot of those things are, are uh, stacked up against the seller. It's in bad shape. It's been on the market for a while. It's not moving. It's priced a little bit too high. Hey, if you go in with a low offer and you're okay with losing it, that's probably a scenario where, yeah, it's okay to lowball there on the home. So otherwise, though, the biggest thing I would say is, look, if you really want the house, it's not a good idea to do that. Um, you want to come in with something reasonable. You want to put a good foot forward. And because um, a lot of times if you if you go in too low, you upset the sellers. Again, you're battling upstream. So in the case that it is okay is probably, again, if the you know, if there's an instance where, hey, the seller is motivated, they really want to sell the house, it's in a bad condition, uh, it's been on the market for a while and it's not moving, and again, the sellers are motivated um, and they're open to different offers, that's a time where, hey, you know what, they want to sell it, you know, there's some things that are stacked up against them, uh, let's go ahead and make, you know, make an offer consulting with our agent, you know, that makes sense, and if we don't get it, it's not the end of the world, right? That's, a, that's an instance where it's okay. Uh, to come in low. Um, all right. Now, the times that that a low offer, a low ball is successful too, if you are going to uh, make a low ball offer, uh, where I have seen it be successful, uh, again, is is when, you know, our examples are, are stacked up, right? But also where the buyer has a, um, has their, basically they have their ducks in a row, meaning they have everything lined up to be able to make a quick purchase. There's not a lot of conditions. The seller can just um, accept an offer, quickly close. There's not a lot of outstanding conditions that have to happen. So for example, probably the best offer that you can get or that you can make as a buyer or get as a seller would be a cash offer with no conditions and a quick closing in some instances, right? And so when you when you make that offer, if you can make it as pe- appealing to the seller, uh, other than price, that's when you're going to have your best success. So, thanks for tuning into this week's episode of the Real. If you're in an instance where you where you think you might want to make a lowball offer, again, consulting with your agent and talking to them about it uh, is the best place to start. <laughs>